All right, so one of my biggest tips for building anything is be different. Yes, use Etsy. Use it as a reference for what is selling, what's hot. Do not replicate that, but kind of use it as a reference. Okay, so example, if floating shelves, um, you know, if they're hot, you know that they're, you know, they're selling like crazy on Etsy and you can actually go in and look and see how many each person has sold. Make a floating shelf, but make one that is distressed, that looks like it's been hand hewn. Uh, I actually have a video on that. Um, they'll sell like crazy. Make it to where it's, it's connected with French cleat. You know, do something different. Make it completely different. What I like to do with a lot of my uh, woodworking projects and a lot of people don't have the access to this but I like to use antique wood. Antique wood is not only beautiful but you can also use that as your selling point all right so that is you're creating something completely different than everyone else that's on there. So again let's say let's say for example you're going to do the floating shelf you know word it as floating shelf made with antique longleaf pine be totally different. So let me go into more detail about that because it's the only way that you're gonna make money with this. Everyone out there right now is using a laser cutter or a CNC machine to make tons of products, flooding the market with it. So what am I not gonna do? Use a laser cutter or a CNC machine. For one thing, I don't have one. Another thing is I'm not gonna be buying one anytime soon because of that. Um, now maybe if I'm gonna be doing like my own project, yeah, I'd love to have one, it'd be, it'd be nice, but if I'm gonna be doing something to be different in order to sell items, that's not gonna come into play. So you have to think outside of the box. Think completely outside of the box when it comes to sales, because essentially that's what this is. You're gonna to have to explain to people why your product is better than the 10,000 other things out there. Well, the 10,000 other things out there are made by a machine, put together by hand whatever. Again, like I mentioned, the antique wood, the reclaimed wood, uh, use that as a sales tactic. 100 plus year old material made from a reclaimed whiskey warehouse. Um, and I say that because a lot of my material, even what lines my walls, I actually did come from a, a whiskey warehouse. Um, but you can use that to be different, to show people that you're different. The product itself is one part of selling something. The story behind the product is the second part, and sometimes the most important. Uh, just like the coasters I was talking about earlier. If I had just bought a 4x4 from Lowe's, do you think that I really would have sold any of those coasters or people would have uh, went crazy? No, they wanted them because it was reclaimed heart pine that. If you have access to any type of old structure coming down, an old house remodeling, any of that stuff, a lot of this stuff is things that people throw away. They see garbage, I see gold. And it's not just because of the material, because it's the story. Came out of a hundred year old house, you know, reclaimed. Everybody loves reclaimed material. So that's just a way of saying, think outside of the box. All right, I mean, again, it's a sales tactic, but works and it also makes some beautiful products. Okay, so you found the item that you wanna make. You've checked out the competition. The competition's out there. You know what they're selling things for. Next thing is you make yours the way that you want, but you shake it up and you make it crazy. I mean, you make it interesting. Again, like we talked about, you give someone a reason to buy your product versus someone else's. Like right now, charcuterie boards and cutting boards, they're hot. You know, everybody is making them and it's driving the price way down. Your time is worth more than that. In order to basically put your own price on it is you have to make something that is completely different than everybody else. So example, cutting boards. Everybody's buying them up. I didn't wanna make them because everyone else is making them. Again, that's number one, do not do what everyone else is doing. I had some scrap ends of some live edge boards here in the shop and I made these. 
they were the scrap ends. I wanted to make a cutting board, so I made what others weren't, and that was a inch and a half to two inch thick live edge cutting board. It's as simple as that. You can take a concept that is hot, throw your own twist to it, sell the crap out of it, basically name your own price. That cutting board was $250, and that is where the money is made. Taking what's hot, turning it around, being creative. Okay, so the pricing of what you make. Let's say that, let's go back to the picture frame. Let's say that the, that the picture frame costs you $5 to make. You cannot make any money, you know, going by the old rule of thumb of whatever it costs in materials to make, double it, sell it for that. You can't do it. Everything's so expensive nowadays. You have to do something so different that when your item pops up, let's say on Marketplace, let's say your picture frame, and it's right beside another one, you know, that may be the same size and the exact same amount of material went into it, same cost that went into it. Let's say that yours has the distressed look that we had talked about. It looks like that it was actually made out of old barn wood or an old piece of a beam. That's what's gonna set yours apart from theirs, and that's why you're gonna be able to charge twice as much. You know, price things within reason, but you can price things high. Again, going back, looking at the coasters, I mean, that's all they were, were three quarter inch slices of four by four, $30 for a set. You can price it however you'd like. You have to take into consideration your time. Your time is definitely worth money. The cost of making this item and the competition. Lots of competition, you're gonna to have to compete. I mean, if you've made something that looks just like a lot of other things, you're gonna to have to compete or you'll never sell anything. But if you've made something that looks totally different, you can double the price on it and you'll get it because everyone wants something that no one else has, if that makes sense. Okay, so you've made your lovely picture frame and you're ready to take a picture of it and put it online, uh, be it Marketplace, Etsy, wherever you've decided. You don't just want to take a picture of it in your garage, just, you know, slap it on. It's not gonna sell. Presentation, this goes for any type of marketing of any kind. And whenever you're doing a side hustle, you are doing a business. You have to take into consideration all of these things. You know, the overhead for it, as well as, like we discussed, shipping and now presentation. That is one thing that all businesses, especially that sell any type of items, focus on. They spend, you know, the big businesses spend millions of dollars just on making things look perfect. You do not have to do that, but just stage your product. So don't take a picture of you holding it, you know, and put it on there or it laying on the table. If it is a picture frame that you've made, hang it on a wall. It's as easy as that. I've actually built fake walls to display items that mount to a wall. That way I don't have to keep poking holes into my walls, but stage it up. Um, even the coasters, this uh, concealment shelf that I made, that's a fake wall. But to start with, do all of this stuff in your house, stage it. If you make a piece of furniture that you would like to sell, stage it, you know, set it up like it's in someone's home. I have taken in tables that weigh three, 400 pounds, brought in a crew to help me pack it into my house just to take a few pictures of it, just to pack it back out of the house. They all wanted to kill me, but you have to do it because nobody wants to buy a picture of something that's just taken in your garage. Stage it up, make it look different because everyone else is just posting these little generic pictures. Make yours look awesome, make people think, hey, I can see myself sitting at this table. Hey, I can see that picture frame, you know, right over there on the wall with the family photo in it. I know it's getting deep, but this is all part of it. And it really doesn't take that long to, uh, you know, to do all that. It's a hassle, but if you want to sell it, do that. And once you have picked out an item that has hit, you know, that you have several inquiries about, let's say this concealment shelf, this is a different shelf that I made. 
I had so many orders for this that I actually had to t take the post down because if I'm going to tell someone, and this is another key part, if you tell someone that you're going to have it ready in two weeks, it better be ready in two weeks because what you do not want is negative feedback, anything negative. That is huge nowadays. Everybody goes to, to Facebook, to Insta, any of that stuff for reviews. So you want to make sure that you are known for being the best. So be prepared for success. You have to be. If you are, now don't get greedy because you're going to want to. Just like the uh, concealment shelf that I showed you. We had to go into basically industry mode. You know, I had to call out the troops to get these orders put out in enough time. I mean, I was making awesome money on those. It cost me $35 to make one. It took me an hour, actually an hour and five minutes, and I was selling for $200 a piece. Awesome hustle. I mean, that's what I call home run. But no one else is making it, you know, and if they are, you have to pay for the shipping to get it shipped in. So I'll go over that in the next video. I'm actually going to be doing a video on my top five most profitable side hustles. And every single one of them were made in my garage. You can literally make thousands upon thousands of dollars on your day off doing the things that you love. Put the money back in. So it takes money to make money, right? We've heard this saying. To start with, you can use the items that you have, you know, laying around. Again, going back to those coasters because I have this block of wood here. If I didn't have a miter saw, I could have used a skill saw. It would have taken an extra step, you know, so. But put the money back in because ultimately it does take money to make money. And in order for you to grow and your business to grow, you have to put money into your business. Okay, so let's say that you made a couple thousand bucks off of making your picture frames. You've sold them, they've done well. You've decided to move on to something new. You're not gonna do that anymore. Uh, sales have started to slow down. Now you have this money, what to do with it? Your instinct is gonna be to spend it. So let's go on vacation. And again, like I had mentioned, this side hustle thing, this, I mean, that's why I do it. I mean, I do it to go on vacations, to buy tools that I normally wouldn't be able to buy. And now I'm actually building a nice woodworking shop with side hustle. But in order to get to that point, you have to put money back into your business for it to grow. It's just like any other business. You have to take your cut, but you have to also set aside money for your next endeavor because starting it up may cost a little bit more. You may have more overhead going into it on material. You may need to buy a new nail gun for this. Let's say um, this next project that you want to do, uh, you may have to buy a planer. You'll have the money to buy the planer. And that's ultimately how I have grown, you know, my tools and what I use is taking money from my side hustle, spending about half of it, quarter, half on the things that I would like to do just for play. And then the rest of it is I upgrade, you know, and then I can build more intricate things, learning as I go, making nicer things and not going into debt while I'm doing it. I'm paying for it all as I go. So invest back into yourself. So I hope that those tips helped. I know it was kind of all over the place, but ultimately those are the main roles. The biggest thing I want you to take away from this is be different. Use your mind, use your imagination, create something that no one else is creating. I mean, you cannot sell something that the market is flooded on. Again, going back to the CNC's, the lasers. If you look how cheap some of this stuff is being sold on Etsy, including shipping, that means that the market is so competitive they can't hardly sell it. Be creative. You can do it. Use your mind. Again, in my next video, I'm going to be going over my five most profitable side hustles yet. I stopped doing them so I could work on another side hustle. They were still selling like crazy and they still will. If you like this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Follow me for more. Again, I've got a hot video coming out. It should be coming out in the next week. Stay tuned. Make some money.